could say, here's a city half as old as time. But its name is known to millions today only because one man chose to spend his holidays there. It's in the heart of Morocco, a couple of hundred miles from the sea, screened by the Atlas Mountains from the Sahara Desert. It's the city where the bus has not yet replaced the camel. Berbers from the mountain districts, Arabs from the north, merchants and mountebanks come to this marketplace in Marrakesh to meet, to drive a bargain, to exchange the news. It's easy to see them as the descendants of the wandering tribes of Africa. But in the remote past, they formed the Roman garrisons along the Rhine and the Danube. Centuries later, their forefathers founded the mighty Moorish Empire, conquering most of Spain and bringing art and science to the west. Marrakesh became the first city of Africa. But from the 16th century, the power of the Moorish Empire steadily declined. Morocco became a protectorate of France in 1912. There's plenty of business to be done here by the water cellar especially in the Jma El Fna. That's the main square. Its name means the square of execution. Not so many years ago, you could have seen it decorated with the heads of guilty men. Now it's all very quiet and peaceful. So Winston Churchill, like Julius Caesar and good Queen Bess, has the knack of securing a niche in history for the places he visits. He came here first in 1936, and he recuperated here from pneumonia during the war. In peacetime with Lady Churchill, he's chosen Marrakesh several times as a haven from the rigors of British winter. London to Marrakesh, 1,200 miles, about five hours by air, to a five-star hotel whose suites with private bathrooms must seem to be unfair competition to the water cellar in the marketplace. The table decoration of icing and marzipan was much admired by the distinguished guests. And if you remember the annual Churchill birthday cake, you'll know that that was admiration from experts. This is the hotel balcony from which the great statesman does much of his painting. There seem to be no limits to the gifts of this amazing man. And for generations yet unborn, the transposition of such views of Marrakesh to canvas will provide eternal reminders of the tireless energy of an artist well over 80 years old. Even relaxing in the hotel gardens among his fellow guests, he has the magnetism that singles him out from the crowd. Artist, statesman, historian and prophet, he is a legend in his lifetime. As long as anyone can remember, Sir Winston's originality of thought has extended to his dress. A hat that would be called eccentric on anyone seems on him as he goes for a drive round the city walls. Dominating the scene at Marrakesh from almost any standpoint is the Kutubian Mosque with its conspicuous minaret, contrasting its dignity with the hurrying cyclists in the streets as sunshine and shadow throw their contrasts across the marketplace. Here, women retain their mystery. Most of them still wear the veil in public.
with such an abundance of natural colour, it's strange, perhaps, that dyeing should be one of the most famous industries. In the dye market, displays of wool show many brilliant examples of a skill that was known to the Moors long before the creation of colour through modern chemicals. Naturally enough, since the market is a place frequented by people with money to spend, it's also a popular spot for others who are willing to help them to spend it. From time immemorial, the snake charmer has divided his charm between the contortions of a fascinated reptile and extortions from a fascinated spectator. In intervals of leisurely bargaining, there'll always be time to watch the acrobats or to listen to the beguiling strains of traditional music. There's an old saying that from Africa there's always something new. And what's newer than a skiffle group? But undoubtedly the star turn of the market is the man who is not out for publicity, the Moorish wood turn. He seems to have been fitted with hands and feet in the wrong places. All the same, his work has won fame throughout the world. tourist casually passing through Marrakesh, this is the fringe of Islam, the gateway to the mysterious East that has sat impassively on the sidelines while progress marched through the Western world. The music is the same as always. The clowns and the acrobats have nothing new to offer. To outward appearances, Marrakesh is the same today as when it was built in the 12th century. But the past few years have seen the beginnings of change. The aeroplane has brought Morocco within a few hours' journey of important cities like London, Paris and New York. Marrakesh is becoming a busy centre for the holidays of the many. And in years to come, the story of the man who wore a big hat and made history will be told by a little old lady who today is a little girl in Marrakesh.